I've been crucified with Christ I've been crucified with Christ I no longer live but Christ lives in me We greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today and invite you and welcome you to our Bible study of the Apostles' Doctrine of Eschatology. The subject that we're going to be examining today is many times today used in expressions by church people and they always say the expression that they will do this, they will do that, they will go here or go there if the Lord should tarry. We ask the question tonight, is this a biblical statement if the Lord tarries? What does the Bible say? If the Lord tarries is a question that we would like to address tonight. Have you heard this statement before? It seems like every time you turn around these days, someone is writing or exclaiming that if the Lord tarries, they will do this or do that. How can people explain this statement in light of the following scriptures which were written in the A.D. 60s of the first century? In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 through 28, notice what the Bible says. For Christ has not entered into the holy place made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, nor yet that he should offer himself often, as the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Did you catch what that scripture said? That scripture said that he appeared in the end of the world and has gone on to heaven and is going to reappear for those who are waiting for him, who are looking for his return. A first century statement. Notice in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 39. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Look at these verses again. They clearly and unambiguously state that Jesus appeared once in the end of the age to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. He then entered into heaven to appear in the presence of God for those first century born again Christians and he shall appear the second time to those who were waiting and watching for him the second time without sin unto salvation. The scripture plainly proclaims that for yet a little while he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 37. This verse clearly states that from the time this statement was written, it would only be a little while until Jesus Christ would appear again the second time and that he will not tarry. It is inconsistent to think, to say, or to write if the Lord tarries. When the scriptures plainly state that he will not tarry. Such statements as this they make the Word of God out to be a lie. This is a very real problem with the futurist doctrine that is taught in many churches today. 
We hear it so much, and we hear it from preachers on television, on the radio, even on the internet, that the Lord is about to come. He could come at any moment. He will come if He doesn't tarry. Let's take a closer look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26 and 28. For then must He often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for Him shall He appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Now verse 26 clearly states that Jesus appeared once. It said now in the end of the world or the age. Not the end of the planet, but the end of the age. The word anon there is used as world and means age. To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Notice the key word now in this verse. What world or age was coming to an end when the writer of the book of Hebrews penned this verse. It was the old covenant world. That was the age that was coming to an end. The only end in the entire Bible is the end that was happening in the first century in AD 70, the end of God's covenant that He had with the nation of Israel. After the death, burial, resurrection, and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Old Covenant came to an end. It was at the destruction of the city of Jerusalem and the temple. History tells us that this happened in A.D. 70 of the first century. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2 and 3, we read the Bible says this, Hath in these last days spoken unto us by His Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory, and the expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The writer of the book of Hebrews was proclaiming that his day was to be in the last days. It was through Jesus that the new covenant world or age began, which ended the old covenant age or world. We find another direct reference to this in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11. Now all these things happen unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. The Apostle Paul was writing to the church in Corinth, and he was saying to them, we want you to notice and focus on the statement that's found in 1 Corinthians 10 and 11. It said, upon whom the ends of the world or the age have come. Again, this clearly states that the end of their old covenant world or age had come upon them back in the first century. At the end and destruction of this old covenant world, it is clear that the new covenant age was ushered in by Jesus at His coming in A.D. 70. If Jesus has not come yet, then we would still be living in the Old Covenant world or the Old Covenant age. In conclusion, Jesus did not tarry, but rather came back with judgment and victory as He ended one covenant world and established another everlasting new covenant world or age which has no end. This completely nullifies the saying, the question, if the Lord tarries, because He did not tarry, but is with us today as we rule and reign 
with Him in His kingdom. It is through our faith and obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must be born again. In John 3, verse 3 and 5, the Bible said this, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. It is only through a covenant connection that we have opportunity for eternal life. It was on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts that the Apostle Peter first preached the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ in Acts chapter 2, verse 38 and 39. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Without this covenant connection by our faith and obedience to the gospel, you cannot be saved. Therefore the saying, if the Lord tarries, this saying is completely, it's an unscriptural statement. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. Thank you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been